What's good, y'all? It's the Demachettes. React, and we're back, back with, with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today, we are back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video. You guys have been blowing us. Blowing us. Oh, man. And we finally get into it. We here. We here now, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so if you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down. Hit, hit that, that red subscribe, subscribe button. button. And turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road, road to 50 K. And we cannot get there without you guys. All right. Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's get let's it. I got this. If I got this, 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 if I Hey, so our comments are very supportive, y'all. Please drop in the comment section. Let us know. Did he kill it? Did he say it right? And what he said, right? Because yeah. we need to know. That was. <laughs> It sounded like it was good. I'm gonna use it. He did good. <laughs> Everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Once again, this shirt was made by geography Ruba from UnityShirtsShop.com. Nice. She makes these cool handmade African flag logo shirts. Oh, and uh, she specifically made this one with the Geography Now logo in the back for me. That's oh, cute. Oh, don't forget, you can also get Geography Now merchandise at GeographyNow.com. Just a heads up. Anyway, South Africa. This is a big one. South Africa is kind of a big deal in Africa in general. And you know what else is a big deal? Having an actual South African in the episode. Say hi to Catherine from South Africa. Come on. Let's man. go. Okay. Yay. My the, my people there are just the best people in the world, and it will always be home, yeah. no matter where I live. All right. Well, you ready to get into this episode, Catherine? Yes. All right. Let's do it. That's the. always played a historically imperative role when it came to expeditions from early traders. And you can probably guess why. For one, the country lies at the bottom of the continent of Africa, bi-coastal between the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. In fact, the southernmost point of the African continental mainland, Cape Agulhas, has a cool spot you can check out with a plaque and a giant Africa map monument. From there, Ooh, they are bordered by six other countries, yes. where you get little Eswatini, and the entirely enclaved country of Lesotho. From there, the country is divided into nine provinces. The country doesn't have one official capital, but rather three. Pretoria, which holds the executive branch, including the home of the president, as well as most of the mm. embassies for international diplomats. The legislative branch is held in Cape Town, where you can find the national parliament, and second yeah, largest city in the country, and Bloemfontein, near the center of the country, hosts the judicial branch and First the Supreme time, Court of know. Appeal. Some say technically Johannesburg could also be considered maybe a fourth capital, because it has the constitutional court, and the city has a huge level of significance as the largest and busiest city of the country, but eh, you decide. Johannesburg also hosts the biggest and busiest airport in South Africa, OR Tambo International, Whereas the second and third largest airports lie respectively in the second and third largest cities, Cape Town and Durban's King Shaka International. The country has a wide network of roadways and the most well-developed rail system in all of Africa. Johannesburg mm -hmm. being the main mm -hmm. central hub that spiderwebs all the other main lines that stretch into every other province and abroad into neighboring countries. South Africa also boasts incredible seafaring infrastructure with the second busiest container port in all of Africa after Port Said in Egypt. The port of Durban, which provides 60% of all South Africa's shipping revenue. Finally, wow. South Africa's island or insular region are mostly confined to small patches along the coasts, like the Port Elizabeth Bay or Robin Island just north of Cape Town, famous for being the spot where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. However, if we include the entire wow. domain belonging to South Africa, then Prince Edward and Marion Island, which belong to the Western Cape Province, are the actual southernmost points of the African continent. These islands are mostly uninhabited, with the exception of a meteorological station and bunkers for scientists. Yeah, and the southernmost point on Marion Island is called Cape Hooker. Literally, it is. <laughs> you're probably wondering, why isn't the Sutu part of South Africa? Yeah, you know, why? Hmm. Well, long story short, it was kind of like... UK! Okay, if you help me kick his a I'll be one of your protectorates. You got a deal. <laughs> I got him. Woo! Hey, you're kidding. That's crazy. We want to make you a part of the Cape Colony. Oh, no, I'll just stick with protectorate. Well, we don't like that. Okay, well, I guess that means we'll spend the next 14 years resisting and giving you a headache. Deal. <laughs> we'll give up. We'll give you guys self-rule as a separate crown colony. You guys suck, but whatever. It's better than being part of the Cape Colony. South Africa is now going to become its own country, and we want you to be in it. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, come on. We're going to have very tense, racially divisive apartheid policies that will disenfranchise your people. Okay, how do you see that as conducive to the benefit of my people? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I don't know. All right, well, enjoy your self-rule. And from there, it pretty much sealed the deal that Lesotho would never join South Africa. Anyway! Now, here's the interesting thing. Even though South Africa is a republic, the constitution includes the traditional leadership clause, which recognizes the certain indigenous monarchs. Yeah, today there are about 13 monarchs from nine different ethno-linguistic groups and tons of other smaller paramounts and high chiefs in South Africa. Although they do not have direct legislative power to the republic, they have a high degree of regional influence and involvement in communal affairs. Sadly, shortly before filming this episode, Zulu King Goodwill's Welitini passed away. He ruled for five decades and had a huge role of significance in the Zulu community. Wow, wow that's big. He was a king. A king. Yeah. Well, in any case, let's talk about some of the top notable spots and let's have South African influencer and travel writer Gofari do it for us. Gofari. Man, okay. what's up? What's up, C? What you thinking so far? This is so big. far. He always jam pack a lot of information in the show. Yeah. The time. So if you guys watching, definitely get your pen and pass for this guy, bro. Yeah. So what I would love to know and hopefully they answer it, is if this is the biggest country in Africa. Mm. Because there's a lot of influence, you know, and especially with the ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Although they're not, you know, leading the nation, they're leading their people. Yeah. You know, such as with the Zulus. So yeah, yeah. I wonder if this is like the biggest country in America. I mean, not America, sorry. Africa and as well as if it's if it's heard of for a person of a certain ethnic group to move away from home like how is that viewed you're so intellectual i try to be <laughs> you're very smart i was just stuck on how big africa is because the edits that he was showing us in south africa alone was like yeah, yo yeah. It was so massive the it's railroads. literally small like it's small mm -hmm. compared to what we knew normally like I ain't gonna see what we normally see, but that is huge. It's yeah. what we normally see. Let me yeah, rephrase yeah. that. Sorry. But Africa itself is huge, and then down into South Africa is just another level of mass. You know what I'm right. saying? So I'm right. stuck on that alone. <laughs> Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Gofari, a South African travel blogger, and I'm gonna talk you through the notable sites to visit in South Africa. So I'm gonna talk through the cultural and the man made sites. We have Blokrans Bridge which is the highest bridge bungee in the world. I also gotta try that. many theme parks like Gold Reef City, the Palace bungee? of the Lost bungee. City, and Ushaka Marine World. Ponte Tower, District 6 Museum, the world's largest pineapple, the big hole, Orlando <laughs> Towers. Pineapple house? I ain't no SpongeBob was African. Pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Who pineapple that? house? That was crazy because that looked like a pineapple house. Mm hmm that was a really big... So, was that a real pineapple? I don't want to go back Let, because... You want to go back? Yeah, yeah, let's go back. Let's take it back to pack. Okay, here we go. Looks like Gold Reef City, the Palace of the Lost City, and Ushaka Marine World. Ponte Tower, District 6 Museum, the world's largest pineapple. Yeah, that's definitely a... Um, that's fake. I see real. So, you walk inside of it and you definitely go meet SpongeBob in there. <laughs> um, that's the vibe I'm getting. Y'all know what we're talking about. Y'all yeah. know what we're talking about. The Big Hole, Orlando Towers, Boabab Tree Bar. We have 10 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, such as Mapungubwe and also Robben Island, is which is where Nelson Mandela was in prison. Thank you. Thanks, Gofari. You are awesome. Check out her Instagram and pages in the links in the description below. But yeah, South Africa's natural wonders, you won't even know where to begin with. Like, they have the largest cave system in Africa, the Congo Caves, Bullflex Park Holes, the tallest waterfall in Africa, and it just goes on and on. Whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, Catherine. That's the nature stuff. You're going to... That's... <laughs> we're going to talk about that in the next segment. We'll, we'll, uh, uh, the next segment, which is... <laughs> so, South Africa. One word, blessed. For one, the country is a low-risk malaria nation, and most areas in the wilderness don't even require medication. They even have their own unique biome Come on with it, huh? The smallest and the richest of the six floral kingdom in the world, only found in southern Africa with over 6,000 endemic plant species, including the national flower, which is the king protea. Mm. When I think of South Africa, that's what I see in my mind, always. Specifically, famous. Specifically, Feinbost, yes. Mm. <laughs> home to the rooibos plant, where rooibos tea comes from, and that's my favorite tea. Mm, and 
Yes, it's amazing. Red. Overall, you literally can't. Gotta see if you can get that online, huh? Mm -hmm. For one, the country is unlike any other nation in that it's not only the southernmost portion well, of the East I'm African saying, Rift, like... but the entire country is kind of split between a semicircle mountain range known as the Great Escarpment. It feeds into the tallest range, the Drakensberg Mountains, in the east, where you can find the tallest peak, Mafadi, shared with Lesotho. These mountains are also the source of the longest river in the country, the Orange River, which ends in the Atlantic Ocean. South Africa doesn't have many large natural lakes, and the majority of inland bodies of water are man-made reservoirs, the largest one being the Harip Dam, located in the center of the country. I've the seen largest natural freshwater mm. lake, though, is speculated to be Sibai, part of KwaZulu-Natal's Greater St. Lucia Wetland Park on the East Coast, a UNESCO heritage site. If you zoom out a little bit, you'll notice the Great Escarpment has these sharp, narrow, parallel wrinkles at the bottom. These are called the Cape Mountains, which are essentially leftover sediments smashed by contrasting tectonic activity long ago, when South Africa was connected to Argentina and Antarctica in the Gondwana supercontinent. Yeah, Above about these that. wrinkles, you have the Great mm -hmm. Karu Namakaland, Bushmanland, and Kalamari, which are dry, arid, rocky areas, sparsely populated and loaded with rich flora of succulent plants and minerals. If you move more east and north of the escarpment, you have the eastern midlands, KwaZulu-Natal coast, sweeping up to the Lowveld and the Limpopo Lowveld in the north. These are the most lush and green areas of South Africa and hold much of the arable land as well as nature and forest preserves. When you move inland, though, you get the Highvelds, the Bushveld, and Hrikaland west, which are the arid savannas of South Africa. This is probably one of the most unique beautiful, areas beautiful. of South Africa because it is the site where two things happened. One, an enormous meteor hit this spot, creating the largest verified impact crater on Earth, known as the Fredford Crater, standing over 300 kilometers wide. You can even oh. see the dome from space at the town when of Fredford. And two, said meteor was yeah. supposedly the source of many minerals like hit? gold and platinum that fed the land, one. which later the inhabitants would subsequently discover and go crazy after in a mad gold. That's something I feel needed to be in the books. That's something that needs to be in the books. One of the biggest meteors to hit and made the biggest, like, you know, yeah. mark in history mm -hmm. right there in South Africa. Right. No size like that around the world ever. Right. I wonder, have anyone, you know, been there before? Yeah. Like, is it like a section that's closed off or is it a section yeah, yeah, yeah. that people can go to? Yeah, because usually when you have things like this, scientists all of a sudden want to just, like, block it off. They don't want you around yeah. it. They don't know if there's anything that's radioactive. Surprisingly, you know, because you know, you don't know it's out of space. You know right, you don't know. Gold rush and mining rush. Now, although South Africa is the second largest economy in Africa after Nigeria, it is ranked the most industrialized, technologically advanced, and economically diversified. And although the country does have a wide income gap between the wealthy and poor, the middle class has been growing every year since the 90s. Today, South That's Africa big. is one of the world's mm -hmm. top platinum and chromium producer. They consistently rank in the top 10 producers of gold and diamonds as well. And finally, the gold rush in Vitbata Sudan in 1886 pretty much established the country as a mineral powerhouse. That's why it's only about 5% of the population is formally employed in farming. This means they've shifted much of their economic activity towards other sectors like manufacturing, business, and finance. They got the real go. Limited is the largest stock exchange in Africa, ranking seven. So, I don't know. I find that a little bit hard to believe because I watch vlogs. Um, and the people, the lifestyle bloggers, mm -hmm. they go to the markets and there's just fruits. St uh, stockpiles of fruits and fruits yeah. and fruits. So f less than 5% is the farmers. You're so. right. You're right. I mean, you have they have so much land out there. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know you guys got some of the craziest fruits. Like, y'all have so much that y'all can work with yeah. when it comes to farming. So I, I'm, I agree with you. Like, you guys probably would have more to offer than 5%. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's right. something to look into. Billions of dollars of investment revenue. South Africa also boasts some of the best medical facilities in Africa and has the third largest hospital in the world. Sadly, in the world, South Africa Ooh. does have the highest population of people. In you see, stuff like that needs to be documented in yeah. books. Like, when is the biggest location in the world, or one of three of the world's biggest, whatever? That need to be documented. Why? Because yeah. I feel like it needs to be at least recognized. People need to have more visitations over there, whatever yeah. it may be. It don't have to be a hospital, right. but it could be any. Thing. people need to visit like right and show I, respects i watch i make dion watch <laughs> oh. a lot of african movies with me and series y'all know that already but there was this one um movie that i watched disclaimer I, it, I did watch one by myself when she wasn't around he the did. boy who harnessed the that. wind I that was the one yeah um was that africa yeah okay is it i believe I so, so. Maybe we talked about this. Jamaica? No, 
It's not Jamaica, but we talked okay. about this before. Okay. But um the the movie about the Ebola outbreak and mm-hmm. how they found it the cure. Was that in um South Africa? I remember when you made me sit down and watch that. <laughs> I don't said, remember the place, but like I, I remember the, the woman answer. and all that. Yeah. Was it the woman? The man came from Africa. I don't remember where part, what part, but he did come from Africa and he brought it with him. He came to? To Africa and he brought it to Africa. Oh, man, look. Y'all, y'all pause. It's late. Hold on. It's late. Just wait a second. It's late. Us, so, so. Think it in and take it out. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember either. But it's late. <laughs> we here. We here. With HIV, I ordered a 7.5 I feel like she has and such a soft the voice. Population right here. Yeah. There's even a character on their version of Sesame Street who has HIV to help kids born with AIDS to cope. And finally, a country I has a like huge them. tourism industry, mostly in the nature areas. Speaking of nature, it's time for Gary Harlow to explain. <laughs> Gary Harlow's Animal Adventure. That's the best I got. South Africa is home to over 20 national parks and dozens of nature reserves. The most famous and visited ones being the Table Mountain National Park and the largest one, Kruger National Park in the Northeast. South Africa is ranked the sixth out of the 17 classified mega diverse countries That's in the good. world. Tenth for huge, plant yeah. species and third for marine endemism. In fact, between May to July, the sardine run happens in which billions of sardines spawn in the cool waters Ooh. of the Agulhas Bank, creating oh, a feeding frenzy that. for all the ocean predators. Look at them go! Chomping! <laughs> Chomping! <laughs> Jaws! <laughs> And there's over 850 bird species, including the national bird. Yo, besides South Africa, we could just give it up for Africa for having the most yes. species ever yes. around. That's where they are originated. That's where they come from. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you will see some of the most amazing animals there. Yeah, you know how in America, North America, birds fly south in the winter? Yes. So do do they fly north in the winter? Somebody pull out a compass for us, please. Because you know we're on different hemispheres, so the yeah, seasons are changed. That's okay. a good question. Whatever. They would know because we know, we was taught birds do fly south. Like we'll see the ducks just hauling up, yeah. up the skies and just hitting on up. Look at that, the blue crane. I got a story about a crane. Oh, God. But I'm not going to tell it right now. Bird, <laughs> but blue crane. But more interesting, South Africa and Namibia are the only two countries in Africa that host penguins. The endangered African or Cape penguin is unique in that it has pink glands above its eyes Ooh. to help regulate body temperature. Since South Africa That's is different. generally much warmer than the typical habitat for penguins like, you know, Antarctica. There's nearly 300 mammal species inhabiting the wilderness, including the national animal springbok there's even an entire national park dedicated to elephants in the south and finally south africa is not only home to many animals but also extinct animal fossils the karoo region has more dinosaur fossil sites than any other place in the country and numerous dinos have been excavated (coughs) and speaking of dinos i got a velocity wrap this up Thank you, Gary. And speaking of wraps, it's time to end up the segment as we always do. Whoa, whoa what's going on? Oh. Food! Alright, let's go. Ooh, the food, yes! Has so many unique dishes, but one thing is guaranteed you will see meat on almost every menu. No shocker, they are the largest meat producer in Africa. In any case, here are some of the top dishes you guys suggested Poppenborst, milk tart, fricadelle, bunny chow, cook sisters, malva pudding, hoiki kos, fat cakes, mopani worms, savory pies, cake malay curry. Ooh, you ain't gonna speak that like milk. you just didn't say some papaya worms. He didn't say papaya. <laughs> oh, I to say, because that wasn't, that was like caterpillar. Worms. Okay, so sometimes we'll call it something, but it's not really what, it, what you called it. So is that insects. real worms? Was that and, insects or was it worms? Yeah, just let us know. Y'all eat grasshoppers? Chocolate grasshoppers? Chocolate grasshoppers. They do. They do. Some people do. Mm, so, the Western Cape province has some of the most refined wineries in the world, starting all the way back to 1659. And supposedly, wow. Route 62 is the longest wine route in the world, going over 850 kilometers Ooh. long. And of course, many might argue the national dish would be braai, or I South African style yeah, barbecue, too. cooked over wood flames. Whoa, Noah, you're That's back. Smoky. Okay, cool. Ooh. Thanks, Noah. Uh, and don't forget to get some burgers from Wimpy's and a rib meal from Steers on Wacky Wednesday. Wacky and make Wacky. sure that you go to Spur. Spur has the two for one mm. special on Mondays. <laughs> and speaking of the people of South Africa, uh, I think that means we should probably move on to the next segment. The. Now- 
Now, I asked you guys, the South African Jagger peeps, what it means to be South African. And here are some things you guys said. Being a South African is very nice because we have so many different types of uh, traditional groups where everyone is celebrating. We come from a beautiful country. We're full of cultural diversity. And of course, we truly epitomize the Rainbow Nation. To be South African means to live in the most beautiful country in the world and to be part of the most vibrant and energetic group of people. We're quite resilient when it comes to the challenges we face as well they have got a strong, strong sense of pride living in a post-apartheid era um, i feel that we have a lot of unity we have a lot of strength and we are really heroes for the challenges that we face every week and that we overcome and we always find a way to remain in the game and strong nice. it's an absolute miracle if you got to see the 2019 rugby world cup in japan and seeing how diverse and incredible uh, south african um, you know, athletes were. It's ever changing. It's always evolving. So many different art movements and interesting things going on. It's an incredible thing. I am especially appreciative of the fact that I don't have to travel far to experience something different. Each of its nine provinces are so unique in their landscapes, in their cultures, in their flavors. So it's that. That's what makes mm. it such a fun and exciting place to be. Sound like there's never a dull moment. There's mm -hmm. always something to do. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. The rugby game in Japan? Mm, I don't know. Speaking of that's diversity, different. though. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he said that was the World Cup. Oh, okay, so yeah. So it's like championships. But um, hmm. the diversity, I love it. You know, um, we didn't know that up north was so different from South America. Yeah. We did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. What about you, Catherine? Well, I would say that every weekend is a Joel. Joel? What was that? Joel. What is that? So if you're going to go for a Joel, you're going to go for a party, and it's going to be like a really Joel. insane night. Like, you're, if you're going to go, go Joel, Joel, you're going to go like Joel. really hard that night. Hmm, okay. Now, as you will find out, South Africa is very diverse in terms of ethnolinguistic people groups. Let's start with a pie chart, shall we? The country has about 60 million people and has the largest white and Asian populations and percentages per population in all of Africa. The country is made up predominantly of black Africans at about 80%. However, keep in mind, of this 80%, there are many groups. Zulus and Kosa are the largest ones at about 23% and 16%, followed by the Northern Sutu and Swana at about 9% and 8%. And from there, there's a bunch of other groups, but we'll talk about them later in this episode. For the remaining 20% of the population, the white South Africans and coloreds have almost identical populations at somewhere around 9% each. Keep in mind though, amongst the white population, about 60% of them are Afrikaners and 35% are English, the remaining five or so percent being other Europeans. The rest of the population is mostly made up of Asians like Indians, Malay Chinese and so on. So they use the South African Rand as their currency and they also use the M plug outlet and they also drive on the left side of the road. Left former British colony. That'd be hard to keep mm -hmm. and also like, somewhere around eighty percent. Trying to keep up with that Christian. driving on the left side. Like right. I mean it's the same unless the feet pedals change as well. Well I do know that the wheel change or I don't know. I don't know. It's a mind thing for us because we but, drive on the right side of the road. So mm -hmm. if we was to go out there driving on the left would be I don't think it would be hard. I, think I don't be think it would be hard. Something but like, to think about, though. You got to really be paying attention. Yeah. You know, are you going to revert back to the right side? So, I'd rather have, a, have a, a driver for, yeah, for that. Just like a random thought thinking that you're doing it wrong and you make a yeah, bad turn. Yeah, collision. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Not to hit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, like. For real, though. I'm like, not saying it in a bad way. I'm just, I'm visualizing it. Like, you remember, um. Left eye in Honduras when she was driving, and then they had a car coming on the wrong side. And that's because all I, I mean, you gotta think about it when you have been wired to drive on a certain right side of the street. Even mm -hmm. if we like in America, like when we're driving on the right side, and someone is in the, our lane, we slapping our horn, and we trying to make sure they notice us. So if we're in the left lane, and we see somebody driving in a well, like maybe the same lane, we might get yeah. paranoid yeah. easily because it's not normal. Right. Distinction. So you heard that word, colored. Okay, we Americans might have some horrible pre-civil rights flashbacks when we hear that word, but we assure you, it's totally safe to use here in South Africa, right? Yeah. It is totally safe, and I actually did use that word a few times in America, and I didn't know what I was doing until one of my friends... So black people aren't viewed as black people, they're viewed as colored people? No. No? Um, is that what they're saying? The colors are the ones who are of mixed race. Oh, so okay, okay. Here okay. in America, colored mean mint black. 
Right. Uh, it, came from a, it came from a time, but for them, it's like... It means colored. They mix with a little bit of this, a little yeah. bit of that. Colored. Just being real and honest. Yeah. Keep it a buck. Since that was American, he actually pulled me aside and he was like... No. <laughs> now, there's no complete definitive genetic makeup requirement, but colored people are essentially people that are mixed mostly between blacks and whites, although you can also have some Asians in there. Yeah, I heard someone say that before. Okay. Africans are fluent in at least two or three languages. You with English and Afrikaans, right? Yes. Yeah. Is it kind of like really appreciated when a black South African sees a white South African speaking their language? Yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. And that's something that I have not mastered. We are taught Kosa in school, for example. It, it, it isn't to the degree that Afrikaans is, is taught. You don't really become fluent. Like I can understand certain things, but not a lot. Yeah, I think uh, Port Elizabeth was changed to Paipela yes, or something it was. like that. Yeah. Exactly. He said that good. <laughs> He's very smart. That was good. <laughs> Yeah. And yes, many of the Muni languages like Zulu and Kosa have the click sounds. And okay, so I want to say this as respectful as I can. Oh, Lord. I do know the history of, you know, when Africa got colonized. Yeah. But. But. The colors. Oh, that, that word just makes me sound and funny. They even made a mention about it that it sounds, you know, weird to some people when they hear, yeah. you know, the, they say it out To us Americans. Yeah. So, the mixed race and the white Africans, do they have culture, traditions that they created just like the Africans have been having it for centuries? Or do the other cultures... Um, get involved with the original tradition that is right. birthed in South Africa. Right, because she says she knows Kosa because they're taught it in school. So they're, and, yeah. And we also know that they teach the traditional dances in school. Right. So do they take part in this as well? That's very interesting. And again, I say it as respectful as I know how. And I believe okay. you went the right way with your question yeah. because I was even able to, you know, elaborate on it just a little bit. And that was a very good question. Thanks, you know, sweet. you get a power fist bump for that one. Boop. Wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. These clicks were actually borrowed though. See, of the black Africans, the majority are Bantu. Believe it or not, they are not the original inhabitants of South Africa. Archaeological evidence suggests that they migrated somewhere estimated around the 3rd century AD. The Khoi Khoi and San people, often collectively called the Khoi San, make up less than 1% of the population today, and they are the earliest known inhabitants with ancestors dating back somewhere around 100 to 200,000 years, making them speculated to be some of the oldest peoples on Earth. They have the original click languages. Quick history lesson. Over time, the Bantus came in and dominated with their iron tools and farming practices. And although they displaced many of the Khoisan, anthropologists and sociologists speculate that there must have been some intermingling because the click consonants were adopted in their languages. Over mm. a millennium later, the Dutch were first Europeans to come in and establish Cape Town and then brought in their farmers known as Boer. Meanwhile, hundreds of miles east, Shaka Zulu was unifying most of the Nguni tribes in the early 19th century and drove out many of the rival tribes like the Matabele, Makololo, and the Fengu. This was known as the Mfetane, or the Great Crushing and displacement. And I can say that one. Say it, baby. Mmm. But saying it. Sound like he sucked his teeth in the mm. middle of that. Baby, mm. I'm not doing that. Mmm. But saying it. Yeah. Close we need enough. some of y'all classes. <laughs> oh, we're going to get it when we go. Really complicated. So here's a quick cutaway to help. I'm taking Cape Town while well, the Netherlands has problems in Europe. Well, I'm just going to go run away then and make my own republics in the north. <laughs> You're not even from this continent. Make me. Oh, I'll make you. Oh, hey. Get bollocks. There's like a ton of gold and diamonds in your new republic areas. Yeah, Move on. Hell no. Uh -oh. Yeah, there's a lot more that goes into that, but basically it was a chain of weird multi-leveled, multi-party, multi-ethnic battles and subjugation. In addition to the countless native Bantus killed in wars, there were two board wars between the British and Afrikaners, which led to 10% of the white Afrikaner population being killed. So you had one European power subjugating another European group on a continent neither were native to, all dealing with the natives. So, in a nutshell, I want the land. 
I was here centuries before you. I was here over a millennium before you. Seriously, are we really doing this? In any case, after the country gained independence in 1910 as a union and fully sovereign in 1931, it underwent a controversial period of apartheid or apartheid in 1948 all the way up to 1994. This system essentially divided peoples by racial lines and put strict laws that were obviously racist and not like, you know, equivalent to, you know, certain extreme factions of microaggression culture that blames pretty much everything on racism. I mean, like, literally, it was actually written approved and enacted in legal policy racist. Under the homeland system, most of the black population was concentrated in the ethno states called Bantu stands, where only 13% of them... Hmm. So how they come in, take over the land, and then make the, the people follow certain rules? That's how they do it, man. I mean, that's the chain of operation that's been going on for years. They always come over and they always take over and they always try to rebrand. Yeah, history is uncomfortable. Mm, that's not a good it word is. for it. Though. It is uncomfortable, man. And it's so much more to it. So much more to it. Land was reserved for the majority. Is that the boot? Louisiana? No, I'm joking. Rules and services were different for colored people as well, like, and the Asian minorities. It was very complicated and often arbitrarily drawn. Some of the colored people were allowed in... It's just, it, it, it's funny because in America, we was called colored people doing the racism and, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature. But in South Africa, the colored people was the mixed race. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm Which saying? Which is like real, the real definition of color. Color, yeah. Like, so it's, it's just bad for yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Like how they, how they, the two well, terms they, are used in different ways. We were viewed as less than human, so. Mm hmm. Parliament in the 70s and some weren't. Some minorities were labeled in the same group as coloreds, while some like the Lebanese, Taiwanese, Koreans, Japanese, they all shared actually the same classification <laughs> level for whites. It was confusing and weird, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, after a number of factors pressured them, apartheid Crazy. ended with full democratization for blacks in 1994, and that's when things got very incredibly tense. Here's art with this one. Yeah, that was about to go crazy. Hey, guys. Whoa, f Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys, it's me and Tarchin. We're back. All right, I gotta put Tarchin down so we can start. Specifically, rugby. Their national team, the Springboks, have won the World Cup three times, tied with New Zealand. Oh. In fact, South Africa is one of only two countries that has hosted the soccer, rugby, heard, and we heard of this. World Cups. Yep. In fact, they are actually the only African country to host the soccer World Cup so far. Fun fact, South Africans are actually one of the only countries that, like us Americans, also call football Soccer. Cheers to you guys. Soccer! Makes no sense, but we're together in our wrongness. Otherwise, cricket is probably the third most popular sport, and their national team, the Proteus, usually ranks in the world's top 10 best teams. Otherwise, at the Olympics, they've done pretty well in the swimming and athletics department, racking up 26 gold medals so far. Gold is better than silver. They've also been mm -hmm. tennis powerhouses as well. Johan Creek won two Australian Grand Slam titles in the 80s. That's a big deal. In certain areas, you might find a touch of Dutch with things like corf ball. Also originating in South Africa is ring ball, which is basically another variation of corf ball. <laughs> Yuxke is a traditional Afrikaner sport similar to horseshoes in which you have to knock over a peg on the ground from a distance. And many of the native peoples have their own style of martial arts. The most renowned probably being the Nuni stick fighting or Donga, performed mostly yeah. by the Zulu or the Alt. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh, that people. That was better, yeah. Okay. And that's it for me. I'm gonna get the out of here. I'll see you. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Art. And South Africa is also really well known for its surfing. And if you ever just want to watch a competition and have a great jaw, you can go Joel. to J-Bay. Yes, exactly. That's that what again? would happen. So, as we mentioned, South Africa has a huge diversity of ethno-linguistic people groups. We already made a video explaining about some of them, but let's just quickly cover the main ones. First, you have the Nguni group. This group includes the cousins Zulus, Osas, and the Ndebele peoples. Zulus are probably the most well-known worldwide. You may have seen images of their traditional animal skin warriors attire or weaponry and dance ceremonies for the men. Women often wear those wide conical isicholo hats on special occasions. For the Kosa, they are kind of like the pacifist siblings of the Zulus. Their traditional garbs have those black and white patterns with beads and red ochre dyed blanket coverings. Swatini, known for honoring their kings with mflanga or reed dance. Then we have the Sutu group, made up of the Sutu, the Tswana, and the Sepedi peoples. They all relevant 
relatives to the people of Lesotho and Botswana, and many of them are mountain people. You can see lots of them uh -huh. riding horses and wearing Mokorotlo hats and Basutu blankets. The temperatures are generally colder with high elevations. The Swana people have eight major clans, and they love the color blue, especially with the Lesotho cloth. The Songa are known for their many, many initiation rituals and electric dance style or Songa disco. The Venda people are some of the most isolated groups in the north, famous for their natural medicines, and the Masangwe, or bare knuckle fist fight sport, uh -oh. which people use to kind of like monitor uh -oh. and solve disputes. Nako non I actually heard of that fight. Really? Didn't get a chance to get off on it, but yeah, I, I heard of that. They hand wrap one fist, mm -hmm. and I think they use just one hand to swing with. Oh no. Yeah. I need yeah, my hey, hand. Drop that in the comment section if you guys want us to see, look more into that one or anything else considering the sports of South Africa. Yes. Africans. We already explained about the white South Africans. The Afrikaners and the English are unique in the way that they kind of develop their own breakaway Africanized culture from the European ancestors. What are you, by the way? I'm English. Oh, okay. I am an English through and through. The colored community has always kind of had a unique status as the somewhat marginalized, but not as marginalized sure group. They've always kind of uh -huh. had to figure out who they were since they technically didn't fully belong anywhere. It's, yeah. yeah. Then you have the Asian community, the largest groups being in the Cape Malays and the Indians, brought over during colonial times for their indigenous servitude. The Burkhardt neighborhood of Cape Town is essentially the Ooh. Malay quarter it's and nice. today their it's culture nice. is a fascinating mixture that blends elements of Dutch and Asian. In fact most of them actually speak Afrikaans as their first language and the Malay language is almost all but gone. The Indian community was brought in by the British and Durban has one of the highest population of Indians outside of India. Most were brought over from West and South India including Gandhi who spent 21 years living in the area. Whew, yeah that was a lot and that wasn't even scratching the surface. There's so many other okay. people groups we didn't even talk talk about. But in any case, here's Man. Hannah to explain a little bit more about the few things that South Africa's people have collectively as one entity, one entity, eternity. You got <laughs> it, you got it. Hannah's culture segment. Random Hannah. Woo! South Africa! Guys, get a random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. So, all right, obviously there is no such thing as a single type of South African, but in the mm. end, they are still one country that moves forward. To the best of their ability. For one, many of the native ethnic groups, whether Zulu or Venda, follow the Labola system, in which the groom must pay a dowry in cattle to the bride's family. I love the countries where they pay people with cattle. Remember Rwanda? Yes, I freaked out. I was like, what? There is literally a Labolo app available now to help relieve the stress what? of figuring That's out crazy. how many cattle you owe. Township art became very popular in the 60s. And how do they come up with that? Do they count like your age? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, different characteristics about yourself yeah i'm i'm hey i'm ignorant to it i need all information that's possible to know what exactly goes on with that with the app yes. everything so this is new to me yes y'all let us know that 70s. It was sort of a social commentary movement that depicted the impoverished black communities of South Africa to move towards the end of apartheid. In addition, you will notice there are so many different architecture styles in South yeah, Africa. You yeah. have everything from the massive thatched fortified dome huts of Zulu to the Cape Dutch style homes inspired from the Dutch with flat crow stepped roofs. Yeah, South Africans mm -hmm. have also been front runners in many inventions, discoveries, and innovations. For example, the automatic pool cleaner, the CAT scan, Putty adhesive, the smart lock safety syringe, the world's first heart transplant happened here, the yeah, yellow fever about vaccine, that. Mm -hmm. and they have the biggest optical telescope in the southern hemisphere, and so on. What else? Fun fact, being South African means knowing the difference between now, now now, and just now. Ah uh, yes, thank you Jay. South Africa has also been the location shot of many feature films and TV shows. Everything from the debuting film The Gods <laughs> Must Be Crazy, Academy Award winner Sootsie, which I actually watched last night. Amazing movies. Academy Award nominated District 9 and Chappie. And of course, Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Yes. What's your takeaway from South African cinema? There's some amazing comedy, which I feel like people don't talk about that much. I've been yeah. watching a lot of Leon Schuster movies. Yeah. And finally, the one thing that unifies all South Africans is Heritage Day, in mm. which people are encouraged to wear their traditional costumes and express their background. And everyone joins in a bride together, no matter who you are. Usually nice. the festivals include an abundance of music. So to expound more on that, here's Keith. Blah, blah, blah. Wait. Hey, drop in the comment section. I want to know. I want to know how long does the festival go on for? Probably like, just a day. Can't be just a day. Maybe, yeah, too many it can't people. be a day. It's way too many. Y'all yeah. gotta turn up. I know y'all be having fun too, so how many days? Yes. Do they haul? That's what Keep they call it. Keep this in How's he gonna be in this video? Hannah, I'm hey. 
<laughs> Florida. And guess what? You can't cancel me. Anyways, South Africa. They have so much going on. Even their national anthem is sung in five different languages. Basically, from the beginning, traditional vocals were used, along with the marimba, the yuhadi, the kora, and other assorted hand drums and harps. The first style of music to really take over the world, probably Marabi. Now, Marabi started out in the slums of Johannesburg, and mm. Marabi is a style of music that is basically underground swing jazz. From there, world-renowned artists such as Soweto Gospel Choir and Lady Smith Black Mombazo have put South Africa on the map. Every South African will definitely know Johnny Clegg, the white Zulu who wrote songs in Zulu to criticize apartheid. Today, South right. Africa is known mm. predominantly for its popularity in house music, and more specifically for the subgenres of Wham and I'm a piano. I'm I'm a piano. You guys told us to definitely mention those styles yeah, of music. That's new. Some other yeah. South African artists that you may be familiar with are Diane Wood for their crazy hip hop South African y fusion style of music. You guys might know Synth Peter, who I think has one of the greatest songs ever written. It's called Doof Doof. You shall all go chant to Doof Doof. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. Hope you guys had a good one, and back to you, Paul! Thank you, Keith. Alright, so this is the part where we talk about some of the famous people of South Africa, and here's South African geography Kolo to explain. Yes. South Africa is as talented as it is diverse. A few notable South Africans that you geography peaks might be familiar with include Charlize Theron, John Carney, Trevor Noah, Shoto Kopli, Gugum Bata Ro, Demi really? Peters, Zozi Benzi, Tunzi, and last but not least, business magnate Elon Musk. There are a number of South Africans who've excelled in different fields across the decades. These are but just a few South Africans that you geography peeps might be familiar with. Thank you, Kolo. All right, and with that, we got to move on to the next segment. Uh, this video is getting kind of long. Mm -hmm. Catherine, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's talk about the friends of South Africa. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's going to be Lesotho. Right, so Africa and Mexico. <laughs> Who's in there? Ghana. Ghana, so Ghana really maybe. It depends on where you want to start on the globe. But is Ghana in there? In there? As a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, of course, South Africa wait, has wait, always had many ties Ghana. to their Anglophone counterparts. New Zealand and Australia are kind of like the Southern Hemisphere trio that dominate the Tropic of Capricorn. These three have been trading and assisting each other for centuries and have friendly competitions. There was a bit of tension in the past, though, since many white South Africans choose to move to these countries in fear of policies they think might target them in South Africa. It got to the point where an Australian cabinet member even referred to them as refugees, which caused some backlash. But apart from that, overall, these three get along. All right, you guys. So we actually went ahead and cut the video short. Um, our battery just keeps dying. We didn't realize how long this video was. But yes. you guys said definitely spammed us about it, and y'all wanted us to check it out. And so much information. Yeah, so overall, this was a jam-packed video with a lot of good information mm -hmm. but we feel that we do better when you know it's kind of chopped up so that's why we react to the dances we react to the weddings we right, react right, right. to the people it's the different easier it's simpler attire. yeah, yeah. It's, it's simpler um it's easy it's, to digest it's like y'all wanted us to swallow a steak with this one yeah and i like to chew my food first right so this and one we like is, to have fun yeah and, we like to have fun and, and it was, yeah it's a whole lot it's that like we have to cool. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. We hope y'all learned something with us if you Facts. didn't know before. True. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our joint feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Check out the description box for your reaction requests. We'll Down see below. you soon. Peace. Peace.